Welcome back. We are in the middle of I nutrition my, I don't have my feel contacts, better fast so. and make it last. You have to do all the reading today. So this review is from VC. Um, love these tips. My husband and I sat down and discussed them. I'm going to write them all down and start doing them every day. Very practical. Thanks. Definitely sharing the link. Awesome. Uh, I love that. Um, don't try to do everything at once. Right. I was just going to so. say that. Pick one, do it until you do it well, then pick another one, add it on. Well, and the one tiny habit um, that Tana and I talk about all the time when it comes to food, is this good for my brain or bad for it? It's actually a game I was been playing with Chloe yep. for 13 years now, ever since she was two, is, you know, I'm just like, sweetheart, is this good for your brain or bad for it? And if I said avocado, she'd say two thumbs up. If mm -hmm. I said blueberries, she'd ask me if they're organic because that's the kind of child she is. And that's what you want to do for yourself because you want to be healthy because you love yourself and you don't want the food industry going after your health. That is just so important. So let's talk about meal timing. And the reason I became interested in this is because people who have low blood sugar often get themselves into psychiatric oh, yeah. trouble. Or all kinds of trouble, relationship trouble, like all kinds of trouble. So listen to the symptoms of low blood sugar, of hypoglycemia, and many of my patients. So you know this was a question on my nursing exam. I didn't know. Yeah. Thank it's like you very sure. similar. Yeah. Um, feeling sleepy or drugged, mental confusion, inability to concentrate, impaired memory, dizziness, lightheadedness, nervousness, depression, irritability, blurred vision, overwhelming fatigue, anxiety, panic attacks, palpitations, shaky hands, butterflies, flushing, sweating, faintness, head pressure, headaches, insomnia, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Okay, so they, on my nursing, wait, on my nursing exam, they only pick the really acute ones like aggression, um, you know, dizziness, aggression, fainting, uh, those like, like pretty significant, severe ones. That was, and the answer was low blood sugar. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So I'm actually beginning to work on a new book called the end of mental illness. And I'm like, get your diet, right? <laughs> it's <laughs> like so important. Uh, so it's very important to have protein and healthy fat at every meal and try not to go too long without eating Didn't we if have you have these symptoms. Now, we actually like it when people do intermittent fasting. Didn't we have one of our, um, our young, uh, you know, high profile patients come in and he was getting himself into some yeah, pretty hot water. Yeah, he's not been arrested water. since right. he started eating in but a more consistent way. But his blood sugar was insanely low. And of course, you know, everyone's like, well, that's too simplistic. Um, no, actually it's not. You make bad decisions. Intermittent fasting has been shown to be helpful I actually to like clean this. up the trash that builds up in your brain. So I have a question on intermittent fasting. You can drink clear liquids, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's not but that hard. that is not vodka. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> It's not Vodka's cool. a clear liquid. It's not Kool-Aid either, but I'm okay. My point being, you can have tea, you can have like green tea and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. It's the calories. Yeah. So that's, and I'm making a point that it's, this isn't that hard. You can have So I liquids. do intermittent fasting virtually every day because if too. I like stop eating at six, I don't usually I won't eat, eat again until eight or nine in the morning. Well, and for me, sometimes it's like 11. I just don't have, I know we're not, I'm actually not advocating that if you work out or anything, but I sometimes not, I'm not hungry. Until so I'm if you can go 12 to 16 hours, mm -hmm. it's been found to improve your memory, improve your mood, lose weight, your blood pressure is better and your inflammatory markers are better. So 
nightly, 12, so that's a piece of cake mm -hmm. to do it. What it does is it prevents the nighttime eaters. And you don't want to be a nighttime eater because it gives you an increased risk of having a stroke and heart attack. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because when we go to sleep, our blood pressure dips and it protects us from strokes and heart attacks. But if you ate right before bed, you're called a non-dipper because your blood pressure doesn't drop. It stays high, which puts extra stress on your blood vessels. So you don't want to be a non-dipper. You want to be a dipper. And uh, okay, so stop eating at night. And now I want to talk about foods to choose. So it's like, oh, I can't have this. I can't have that. It's like, stop it. You can have, I mean, let's talk about some beverages. Like you can have water, you can have sparkling water, you can have tea, you can I have found spa a kombucha. water. I found a kombucha that has super low sugar because most of them have like a ridiculous amount of sugar. I actually found one Read that the has, label. yeah, Read I have one that label. has in a, in a 16 ounce bottle only has four grams of sugar, which means per serving it only has two, which is really good. Um, and it's from the natural juice. Okay. So plenty to drink. And everyone's now wondering. And I get sweet leaf. They make 10 different kinds yeah. of stevia. I carry chocolate. Mm -hmm. See, when we went to Europe, we had four bottles of chocolate stevia. And we just put it in coffee, put it in tea, put it in... Um, sparkling water. Sparkling water. Um, I would actually put it in steel-cut oatmeal a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, and so I've not seen health any health we problems. We were out somewhere. It was so cute. Problem. We were out somewhere. And... I've never seen this before. We were out somewhere and I was ordering something and I got my chocolate stevia out and I was putting it in something and there was a, an older man sitting at the table right across from me. At the same time, he got his chocolate stevia out and was putting it in something and we both just started cracking up. And I'm like, I have never seen that before. So it made me wonder if he listens to our podcast. Did he ask you out? Really? Why is that the first thing, thing you think of? Because I'm protecting Cause you. Because you would do that. No. <laughs> because you would do that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, do not. Do you know how I know you would not do that? Because you would kill me. Yes. We're, that's we're actually, clear on Now that. that's actually recorded. Okay, we have beverages, nuts, seeds, nut and seed butter, um, like almonds and Brazil nuts, macadamia nuts. You have to be careful. They have high... Calories. But they also have a lot of special health benefits. So just go easy on them. Specession. Ma macadamia nut oil is really good for cooking. We're going to get to oils. Um, pistachios. Pumpkin seeds. It's actually been found to boost dopamine in the brain. We talked about that. Walnuts. Um, quinoa, which is a seed. Um, beans are a little bit more controversial. but lentils, So my advice on, on beans... The softer beans are easier on digestion. The harder the skin on the bean, the harder it is on digestion. So the larger beans are actually harder. But softer beans like like lentils are not nearly as difficult on digestion. They're they're good for you. We just recommend that you eat them in smaller quantities than people often do. So like a half cup at a time and not every day. And like you often say, as a condiment. Right, as a condiment, as not as your main, main staple. And then fruits, there's all sorts of them, but you want them to be in general, low glycemic, high in fiber. So apples, apricots, avocados, but people go, oh, that's not a fruit. It is. Uh, blueberries, cantaloupe, cherries. Uh, Tomatoes are also a fruit. Lemons, uh, peaches. I mean, there are just so many to tomatoes. And then vegetables, just you want to make them as colorful as possible. Mm -hmm. um, mushrooms, uh, and then oils, avocado oil, coconut oil, macadamia nut oil, olive oil, but only at room temperature. And then healthy, sustainably raised meats. So there's meats, there's vegetables, there's fruit, there's nuts. Um, One of the things I like, and I've given this tip a lot, but I'm going to remind you because it's just a great tip. Um, when you need to wrap something quickly, especially for a kid's lunch, coconut wraps are amazing. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them at most grocery stores now. Um, they just are so easy and it helps you eliminate bread and they're high fiber. And if you want to feel more focused, more protein and less simple carbohydrates, especially for breakfast, children who are taking Ritalin for ADHD, 
do better in school and their medicine lasts Especially longer. Especially for If breakfast. they are taking a high protein. So breakfast. things like eggs with avocado um, and, you know, that kind of a breakfast is much better. So the, the protein with the healthy fat for breakfast is great. Right. So if you had green tea and turkey, uh, eggs, nuts, seeds, uh, high protein veggies like so broccoli and spinach. So I'm going to give you a little tip. One of the, one of the things uh, that my daughter loves is cauliflower rice. We make it almost like fried rice. Okay. That's what it sort of tastes like, but it's just healthy. Um, cauliflower rice with veggies in it. And then we put an egg over the top of it. It's amazing. And she's not getting the bad carbs. She's getting all the good carbs, the high fiber and the healthy fat and the protein. And it's, it's like the perfect meal for her to get started. But if you tend to be a worrier and having trouble letting go of negative thoughts, if you go on a high protein diet, it actually helps you concentrate more on the things that upset you. And so we recommend a um, serotonin rich uh, diet. So combining foods that comp contain tryptophan, tryptophan is the amino acid building block for serotonin, um, with foods that will raise your blood sugar just a little bit. So it's combining foods such as eggs and turkey, seafood, chickpea, nuts and seeds. Those have a lot of tryptophan in them with healthy carbohydrates such as sweet potatoes or quinoa to elicit a short-term insulin response that actually can drive the tryptophan into your brain. So we want you to eat for your brain type. And I talk about that in the book. Okay, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about supplements for your brain. Use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or on our supplements at brainmdhealth.com. Thank you for listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Go to iTunes and leave a review and you'll automatically be entered into a drawing to get a free signed copy of The Brain Warrior's Way and The Brain Warrior's Way Cookbook we give away every month.